To discuss this a little bit more, I'm joined by Yoon Jung Lim. She's a lecturer of Korean studies at Johns Hopkins University. Yoon Jung, welcome. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. Talk to us a little bit more about what Tokyo and Seoul really hope to achieve mm -hmm. by this agreement. Again, the threats from the North Korea has been increasingly becoming the real one, especially this year, as we all observed, they did the two, I mean, a nuclear tests, and they did uh, so many new missile tests, I mean, within only just a year. Uh, and uh, this time, especially over the summer, when they just launched another missile, it actually dropped within the EEG of the Japan. They actually were not able to properly react to that. But so it was the, yes, But concern. threats from mm -hmm. DPRK mm -hmm. are nothing new. Uh, they've been doing this for a long time, so why forge this kind of agreement now? Is it because of the frequency of the tests? Not only just frequency, again, in terms of I'm not an engineer and I'm not, I'm not a technician, but probably some other that engineers have more like a concrete answer for that question. But I'm also, uh, as an observer of this region, I'm pretty sure you know, their capability already kind of you know, surpassing some threshold, some critical point. That's our overarching concern. And so we want to have like a th three-dimensional picture together. So that's, I think, the overarching theme of this agreement. Uh we uh -huh. saw our reporter talk about um, opposition to this of agreement in, in, in the Republic of Korea, in Seoul. Is the opposition really about this specific agreement, or is it more over anti-Japanese sentiment? Yeah, it's a very complicating situation, and as you know, I mean, the, especially uh, this month, I mean, November, um, the people's, I mean, the resentment against this specific incumbent government uh, became pretty uh, serious. And so, in in the middle of this political turmoil, the timing was, I think, uh, uh, was a little tricky. Even though uh, many of experts or policymakers uh, do see kind of necessity of this kind of, you know, uh, 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 agreement with the Japan. But still, the timing and the kind of you know mood of uh, rushing um, that that was, I think, uh, stimulating the people's um, their kind of sensitive um, feelings about uh, this agreement. Mm -hmm. China, of course, is a key player in the region, mm -hmm. and they're saying this this type of agreement will only lead to more tensions with DPRK. Um, does Beijing have a point here? Um, of course, uh, China is the largest trade partner of South Korea. So we don't, I mean, the aim of this agreement is not, of course, uh, stimulating any other regional members of the region. Uh, but I also uh, want to see more like a deep understandings uh, from our neighborhoods, too, about how seriously we take the North Korea as a threat. Uh, of course, you're right. It, it's not a kind of, you know, um, uh, new, new thing uh, or just surprising thing, but it's uh, becoming the rear uh, and much more serious than before. Um, so uh, that's my actually optimism about uh, about the, uh, uh, the my neighborhood. I think uh, our neighborhoods, um, hopefully, um, they will uh, deeply understand the necessity right, we'll of the situation. Uh -huh. Yoon Jung Lim, thank you thank so you. much.